Jesus nah. Christ, you people suck. <laughs> wow. Wolverine on a tangent. Back in the days when we played video games, it was hardcore for the nerdy and lazy. Now things have changed, and all our video games are also for the casual and lady. But that's okay, you know the score. We told you a million times before. Playing console is not just games, it's in the past. Another week in 4G Radio, episode 638 for February 8th, 2021. Now on the show this week, we have Drew. Yes, sir. We have Anthony. Hello. And I think Wombat just showed up. Oh, he is in this room. Ninja's got him. He is. Yep. We're going to have that. Uh, we're going to have that wombat joining thing going on. Hey, is the mic working? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm on. Oh, what, what? I joined before I turned my headset on. Oh, okay. Well, welcome to the show. Thanks. Uh, we got a lot to cover this week, but uh, we'll start with talking video games, what you've been playing. Drew, we'll start with you, Electric Boogaloo. Okay. Electric Boogaloo. Well, Ryan about... would have appreciated, because because Shabadoo is dead. He died. That's a real shame. Yeah. You know, see, he knew who he was. These two didn't know what I was talking about. Well, no, I have never seen Break in Two before. No, uh, they're just not as hip. That's what I said. As they need to be. That's what I said. Yeah. Well, perhaps it's because it's hip to be square now. What's what's his what's his first name? I know well, his last name is Shabadoo, but I don't remember. No, him. don't let don't uh, let. Hold on, don't. I can't not, remember his first name. Yeah. Let's not move over Drew's bomb there. Yeah, he I don't bombed. Then damn bomb. <laughs> okay, Huey Lewis in the news is my jam. Oh you my god, Lewis in the news is my jam. A word not spoken by anybody in about thirty years. Is his oh. name? His <clears throat> name? You ready? His <clears throat> yeah. real name? Yeah. Um, Adolfo Gutierrez Quinones, or Adolfo Gordon Quinones, known professionally as Shabadoo, was an American actor, dancer, and choreographer of African American and Puerto Rican descent. Perhaps best known for his role as Orlando Ozone in the 1984 breakdancing film Break In and its sequel Break In Two: Electric Boogaloo. I thought he was Turbo. I guess I was wrong. He was Ozone. Okay, so he was Ozone, and the other dude, Turbo's still alive, then. Uh, I can't, I can't <laughs> confirm or deny that Turbo is still alive. <laughs> Somebody needs uh, to find, find that out. We did find yes. out. Yes, Michael Boogaloo Shrimp Chambers <laughs> is an American dancer and actor known for his role as Turbo in the 1984 film Break In, and its sequel Break Into Electric Boogaloo, in which he is credited as Boogaloo Shrimp. Boogaloo uh, he shrimp. Is, shrimp? He, what is he, this movie? He is still alive. He was uh he was born November thirteenth, nineteen sixty seven. He is fifty three years old. The movie is about featured in music videos Lionel Richie's web... All Night Long and Shaka Khan's I Feel for You. Oh man. And I'm gonna send you his website right now. The movie now. is about a, a group of kids that are breakdancing to save a community rec center. I mean, yeah, that sounds it's like that in the mean. 80s movie. No, I mean, I think this is where it comes from. Boogaloo Shrimp. That Does he sell shrimp? Link's not working for some reason, but... Yeah. Uh, weird. Hmm. Let's do oh. it this way instead. <laughs> Dead air. Dead air. Uh, yeah. Dead air. Uh, Dead air. Dead air. Dead air. Dead air. Listen, it's important, with this it's important that we track shit. down all the Jesus. members <laughs> of the Breaking and Breaking 2 community. Boogaloo. Is that what this is? I don't think that's... What if I click the link? Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember Boogaloo. Oh, my God. This looks like a oh, wow. website from fucking 1997. 
Thank you for visiting my website. Come and join me this Friday, February 21st, 2020 in Whittier, California. Yeah, clearly the pandemic hit Boogaloo Shrimp hard. Yeah. Because he hasn't updated since presumably a couple days before February 21st, 2020. Yep. When he was planning on the old school party over here hosted by himself and the now dead Shabadoo. Well, I mean, he did die. During the pandemic, so... Yes. He Rest didn't power. die from the pandemic, did he? I think he did die of COVID. I don't, I don't oh, know. God. I saw, uh, I yeah, saw the, sure. I saw the Twitter thread pop up about him. It says, uh, uh, at his home with a cause of death yet to be determined. Okay. Mm. Apparently, uh, February 21st, 2020, the old school party over here featuring R&B pop sensation New Flavor, Freestyle Legend Giggles featuring Charlie Rock, DJ Gemini, Mike T, New Reggaeton. Okay. I don't know any of these people, I just knew. Also, Shabadoo, apparently uh, previously married to Layla Rashawn. I'm glad that we have sorted all of this out. $25 per person, $40 for a VIP ticket. Yep. So there's your uh, update on the cast of Breaking and Breaking 2 Electric Boogaloo. I want to see the gallery here. I feel, I feel oh boy. between that and Screech dying this week. I don't know, man. It's been a tough week. It, it has. Cancer sucks. There is a picture of a Boogaloo shrimp here in his gallery where he looks like Mike Tyson. Oh, you know. Dave Chappelle made the joke that he looked like Turbo from Breaking. One of those jokes. Gotcha. He kind of did. Okay. All right, Drew, video games. You want to talk about those? Video games. Sure. Okay. No, so, no, I mean, this conversation was just so great. I can't imagine why we'd want it to end. Listen. The one that linked us to boogalooshrimp.com. Oh, that was me, actually. Oh, yes. Boogaloo. Sorry, I was reading it wrong. Boogaloo. Yeah. Shrimp. Anyway. Shrimp. Uh, so I want to talk about something that I talked with Anthony about earlier, but I want to mention it here. Okay. Is it is it breaking three? Man, no. I Christ. I, I got I'm... my Kickstarter going to break in three. <laughs> so we've mentioned it briefly on this podcast before, but I've I've done a, a breakdown, if you will, <laughs> during a break dance. Break it. Of I have and I am earning time for a breakdown. <laughs> I am earning enough Microsoft points to where it pays for my, my game pass. Like yeah. indefinitely. It's it's not hard to do if you take the time to do your dailies and your weeklies. And he switched over to Bing. Yeah, I have switched over to Bing because you can get easily 250 points Do you use the rewards app, Drew? The rewards app? The app that is built in, not for Game Pass, just for rewards. It's on Xbox? Yeah, there's a big... Yeah, so that thing this week alone... That thing will give you, yeah. I got like, what was it, 4K this week? It was like 4,000 points that easily... Yeah. By doing something for what? Maybe how many? How many minutes? dollars does that translate to? Four dollars for four thousand points, roughly. So it takes thirty six thousand points to buy a three month Game Pass Ultimate. Now, if I do everything daily, like if I if I do my Bing searches or whatever, there's also this little uh, like if you get the widget on your phone, yeah, for Microsoft Rewards. Uh, they give you like quizzes that you can take every day, ten minutes tops. The daily what, set. Of, yeah, you get daily sets. You you then get a streak going, which gives you extra points. On top of that, your Game Pass quests that you get every month and every week and every day, technically, um, reward you with Microsoft points as well. If you're able to get most of those done, you only have to get them all done. Just get just get the majority of them done. I can pay for Game Pass just using Microsoft points. Yeah, I, I usually average about twenty to twenty five thousand points a month. Yeah, 
and I'm I'm just like this is for so the, the, and, and a lot of people be like why are you doing this it's just a waste of time well I enjoy Game Pass and I have Game Pass Ultimate the the thing is about the Game Pass rewards is the quests make you play games that you normally wouldn't play and sure some of them are just kind of eh, stinkers kind of thing but I'm actually going to be talking about a couple of games that I was like okay. I, I didn't mind this. So uh, one of the things I do I, I did mind was I put a game of Madden with Ken, and I don't want to play Madden anymore. I'm sorry. I really wasn't trying to beat you that bad. You beat the living crap out of me. <laughs> what was the score? It was like 50-something to three. Yeah, he never even scored wow. a touchdown. I, I, I got close to scoring a touchdown, but of course, you know. I intercepted what? it and ran it back for a touchdown. When it when it comes when it comes to clutch plays, we all know how Matt Ryan is. Dude, I was playing as the Raiders. It's not like I was I was playing as like a good team. It doesn't matter. I sabotage myself by playing as the Falcons. <laughs> at one point, at one point, I do have to say it was twenty eight to three, and I kind of chuckled. That's true. <laughs> it's not rocket science here, Anthony. Okay. <laughs> right, everybody at home needs to picture. Drew drawing out the equations. Why isn't it just the? I... Why is it just the the meme with uh? What's it, Zach Galifianakis? Why well, that's the one everybody knows. Well, that one. I was, I was thinking more of a beautiful mind, but <laughs> yeah, that yeah. works too. It's not very beautiful, whenever I'm thinking. But uh, but yeah. Um, so we're doing the Game Pass quest stuff. Um. I picked up, uh, there was a quest that I had to do for uh, State of Decay 2. Um, I had to uh, destroy two plague hearts, which is not, it's not a quick, let's jump in this game for 15 minutes and do. And so I sat down and played some, actually legit played some State of Decay 2. I like that game. It's a good video, especially. That's a, that's a great game. So you don't know this, but you just played it now? Yeah. It's running at sixty now. It was running at thirty before you got a Series X. Yeah, no, so, no, this that, like that's a quality game right there. Yeah, I I just um, don't like the way the co-op works. It's the only I would love to play that with people, but and I get why they do it. In co-op, it's your world. People join it, but they don't make any progress in their own game. Well, they kind of can't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is like I understand why. I just don't like that. Do the, the characters at least cross over? You can carry things back with you, like supplies, but yeah, that's about it. Well, that can help at least. You know, it at least can, you're not going empty handed. But the whole point of playing State of Decay is to advance your world. That's kind of the point. Yeah, I would agree with that. So, and you can't do that when you're in somebody else's world. So. Yeah. But uh, I did play some of that. I actually really enjoyed that. That was a that was a pretty good time. Yeah. Um, there was a. Let's see here. I I also played the hunter. Ah, uh, I tried that quest and I gave up after looking for duck turds for an hour. Uh, th- dude, I I got that quest done in like ten minutes. I, I walked duck for, turds. Woo! Yeah, I literally walked like halfway across that map and never saw a fucking thing. Yeah. It, it's it's so. I uh, finally I was like, you know what? This twenty five points ain't really fucking worth this. Yeah, so. but I, I did that. Um, I loaded up Pan- Pl- Planet Coaster and said, "Yeah, this is uh, really complex, and I don't want to play this." But it, it popped up as soon as you booted it up, so I was done. Yeah, you only got to boot that game up. That game is yeah. very. I went through the tutorial, and I'm just like, "How my head?" Yeah. Who keeps on plugging USBs? It is my wife's work computer <laughs> okay. that's sitting behind me. <laughs> Something is unplugging and plugging back up. I can hear it. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna have to deal with that. Um, let me let me finish up my stuff here. No, uh, I, I did finish um, Far Cry Five. Beat uh, that yes. the main campaign of that. That was a great great game. The only thing I will mention, it is ridiculous the amount of times the deputy gets caught. I mean, the deputy that's... gets caught at least seven times. Yeah. And you escape every single time. And I'm just like, well, I mean, what, like, what's the point, though? That's, that's my thing. 
is like like why why how, why did they have that mechanic in there? So they can introduce you to new areas and characters. It's it's yeah, a lazy but... it's a lazy way to do it, but it's an easy way to do it. Yeah. So. But yeah, uh, I finished that up, uh, and I've I basically set it up to where I'm going to do. You know, if I'm not doing a review game or if I'm not playing a game for Phoenix Down, then I am going to have one single game that I'm going to try to get through completely. Um, and I started up uh, Battle Chasers Night War. Mm. Um, so far, I'm really enjoying that game. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it, it does get difficult. Oh, just wait. Uh, and it, it, you definitely have to grind. So one of the mechanics in that game is going through a, a dungeon uh, multiple times on a higher difficulty to both level up as well as get better gear. Um, and I feel like you're going to have to do that. You're going to have to do that multiple times. That's why I quit playing the game. Yeah. Because I was, it literally wanted me to run a dungeon like five times in order to progress the story. And I'm like, that's not why I'm here. Yeah. So, but I, I actually really enjoy that game. I want to beat it. I bought that game really cheap, like three years ago. It's a wonderful and, game. I just wish that they would have toned that difficulty curve down. Maybe they have, because I know I'm running like version 1.2 point something, and I'm just like, maybe they have adjusted some of this stuff. I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. I have no clue. I booted it up a couple of times since then, and I get fucking wrecked in the first battle. So I'm like, nope. Still the same thing. And then uh, we finished up The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Uh, still a fantastic game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we finished that up uh, last week, yeah. I had the final episode of up now. Uh, and we are now moving on to Yakuza 0. Oh, that game. And I am currently playing Yakuza 0 for Phoenix Down. If you're not careful, that game will last you the rest of the year. I know, I know, and that's, uh, I'm, I'm going to try and stick to the main storyline as much as possible. Which sucks, because the side stuff is so fucking good. I know, <laughs> I know it is. That's the one with the Michael Jackson thriller video in it. Whew. I believe you mean Miracle Johnson. <laughs> it's same thing. No, Miracle Johnson is perfectly camp. Ugh. That whole game. Oh. I don't, I don't think you hit the real estate stuff um, with the the, 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 ch- the chicken until, like, way deep into that game. I don't remember how long it was. I just went to... I, I got. The, I made the Chapter 2 just now, oh, like, dude. yesterday. You ain't even in cha- the tutorial. And Chapter 2 uh, was titled uh, The Crooked Real Estate Broker or something like that? Yeah, that's when you first meet the dude. Okay. But you can actually get your own real estate. I think it's like I want to say chapters 8 or 9, something like that. Oh wow. It's a it's, it's a big game. Yeah. Very Did you weird. finish it? Uh no, I have not finished it. I've got like 60 plus hours in that game. Oh boy. And I have not finished that game. Welcome mm-hmm. to the year of the JRPG. We'll finish a bunch of games. We finished four. Yakuza games are all that big. Yeah, they are. Like, I think I'm 50 hours into Like a Dragon. and The smallest game in that entire series is probably Yakuza 1. Yeah, because it was the first one. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a PS2 game, and they really didn't do much different with the Kiwami version. Uh, all of those games are long, but yeah. Zero is massive. Yeah. But yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, well, I am reviewing. Can I talk about the game that I'm reviewing? Yeah, it came out Friday. I think Friday. Okay, I'm reviewing Neo Two, the Ultimate Edition. Ultimate. So the Ultimate Edition of Neo Two comes with all the DLC that was released. I'm playing on the PC. Um. It's been a very, very long time since I've played a Souls-like game. And it fucking shows. (laughs) But Drew, you beat Dark Souls. I did beat Dark Souls a very long time ago. (laughs) Back in 2015, I believe. 
And I have not played any type of game like that since. The last quote unquote souls type game that I've played was Remnant from the Ashes. Well, this is a PC game, so you could probably cheat. I'm sure I probably can, but that's not the right way to review a video game. No, it's not. I'm just Um I can see how the mechanics like I can see how this game is great. Um yeah, it's Neo's it's definitely great. a fast paced game. It's way faster paced than Dark Souls or something like that. Um there's tons of mechanics, there's tons of different types of weapons in this game. They all play differently. Everything um, works differently with the different stances, and then the second game introduces your Oni mode. Yeah, you go into like a like a almost Demon like a mode. devil trigger mode. Oh man, I, you said devil trigger, and I immediately remember the song from DMC Five. Yep. Yeah, I, I listen to that song quite often. <laughs> that song is whenever you say devil trigger. Now it's like, oh man, I hear that song. There's a song called Devil Trigger. Oh, yeah. oh, oh my yeah. god, it's so good! It's so good! It's the intro music. Yeah, you didn't play yeah. DMC Five, Drew? I did not. You would totally have remembered Devil Trigger. It's it's like DMC Devil May Cry, like in a lot of ways. Better. Yeah, it's like it's it's got it's got like a lady singing it, like poppy almost, like yeah, my Devil Trigger, like that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. But yeah. So I'm playing Neo Two, and I'm I'm trying to learn that game. I've I've I'm still on the first mission. You get to choose a an animal spirit in the second one. I've not played the second one. Yes, you get to choose a oni spirit. Okay, because you could do that in the first one, and of course I picked the goddamn shark. I picked the bird. Bird. Um. Be- because it makes they say it's more agile, and I'm playing a character that's trying to Bird. dodge as much Bird. as possible. Birdie, tiger. Do you do you say that as you're walking through the game? And you go like birdie, birdie. No, I am not Master Betty. You should, you should be Master Betty. No, I'm more like Birdman. <laughs> Birdman. Wow, that made that made uh, <laughs> that made Ryan just leave. Wombat's like, nah, fuck this shit, I'm out. Yep. But yeah, no, I'm reviewing that, and that's that's pretty much it. Harvey Birdman. Yep. What's Lapidus doing nowadays? <laughs> <laughs> He's not in the lawnmower, man. I'll tell you that. God no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. The lawnmower man. Oh boy, the penis. All right, what else? Anything else? No, that's that's it. That's it. Did you do your? Um, did you get your? Uh, what's his name? Fuck. The skin. Or uh-huh. Baptiste. No, nah, not yet. Oh, it's good. It's like the Sandman. You got to get it tonight, or it's over, or isn't it? When's it in? I have no idea. It's a good skin. He looks like um, he's made out of sand. Yeah, the good looks one. a little bit like the uh, the the Brigitte one. I have to so check this out. This will never happen again, Drew. I logged in Friday night to do a couple matches because I was I needed to do my nine for the skin. Sure, I won ten straight. Oh, that never happens. I right. And I, I never get I never get paired up with people who are not complete idiots. Yeah, I won ten straight games. I just kept playing. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna play till I lose. After like six, I'm like, there's no way this can keep going. Sure enough, I quit after my 11th game, which I did lose. Like the 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 11th game paid me back for the first 10 because it was so bad they were just killing us at the spawn door. Were you playing Mystery Heroes yeah, or Quick Player? Yeah, that's pretty much all I play when I'm getting those skins because it's only one round. You know, like when yeah. you don't have to do both sides and all that shit, so. Yeah. So yeah, but I got it in one sitting. I was like, God, that never happens. It's a good night. I was like, you know what? I think I'm done for the weekend. <laughs> I have no real need to play Overwatch anymore. I'm just grabbing the skins, and I, st- you know what? It's still fun to play. So my thing is, is that I've stopped playing the PC version, and that's where I got all my skins. And now that I'm playing the Xbox version occasionally, I'm just like, I don't care because I don't have any of the skins. I, don't, you know. No, you there's, can skin, always... there's skins that I will never get, though. Well, you can always just shoot me a message, and I'll hop on with you if I'm available. I know, I know, I just never do. I like I I play maybe once a week, 
That's kind of yeah. once or twice a week is my limit, and it's just my expel my anxiety game. You know, release my stress. Yeah. Just relax and and play something that I don't have to think about because I've played it so much that I just know how it works. So. Anyway, well, if that's it, uh, we'll move over to Anthony, who told me he didn't play anything. No. Oh. Yeah, no, uh, I had Vertigo, uh, so it wasn't terrible, but it was like enough where I didn't really want to do anything. Um, I've done Animal Crossing, that was about it. I was like, yeah, all right, that's enough for today, because, you know, I'm not feeling great. Um, I did try to play something. Uh, I tried to play the Golden Hive League. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's been a nightmare, trying to get that thing to run. Um, is it because your PC can't handle it? No, actually, it's that that sh- it's that should not be the problem. It's just so when using Xenia, which is the Xbox 360 emulator, the thing that should be noted is that it's not like a normal emulator. Its user interface is not built around being easy to use. So when you change settings you have to open the settings file in a text editor. That sounds worse and, than PC SX2, which is already bad. Yeah, and set all these values. So you have to play around with values to get it to work. And then getting the bloody download of the leak was, you know, not easy. Um, but I got it. I can get music, but I can't get video. So I know it's working to some capacity, but I cannot get the actual screen to show up. Um, so that's where a fair portion of the end of my week went in tr- trying to get that to work. But uh, yeah, no, the vertigo just really fucked up this week for me. So All that's right. it for me. Yeah, I know. Really boring video game podcast, and I haven't played video games. Well, I'll move over to the Wombat. If he's back, I don't know if he's back. Can you guys hear me all right? Oh, now I can. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I had to switch headsets. My other headset wasn't working. Um, so the good news is I am come to the rescue since Anthony didn't play anything. Um, because I played also nothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I played, I mean, I, I played, um, I mean, most of my gaming this week was playing Roblox with my son. Um, so I played a lot of games on Roblox. Hey, um, was that torture? No, they're not. I mean, it's not. It's it's not as um, if you go into it knowing what to expect. It's not as bad as everybody oh, kind of okay. makes it out to be. Um, and then uh, you know I played some more Assassin's Creed uh, Valhalla. I'm uh, uh, in our our good friend uh, John W's uh, stomping grounds in Norwich. And uh, progressing some quests, and I'm trying to avoid getting wrapped up in side quests and trying to just kind of power through the main quest. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's and I'm I'm still really enjoying it. One of the things I really like about the game is the music. Um, I, I think the the soundtrack is really good and really fitting. It reminds me, in some ways, and I'm dating myself a little bit here, but it reminds me in some ways of the uh, Robin Hood Prince of Thieves soundtrack. Um, which I also really liked. Um, I will go to my grave defending that movie. I love that movie. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I'm I'm really enjoying um what I'm playing of uh, of that. Again, I still don't think it's the. I think it's probably the weakest of the the recent three. But um, you know, I'm 28 hours into it or so. Um, and I put, I think 50 or 55 into Origins and um a hundred and some into odyssey so um you know i haven't put nearly as much time into this one as the other one so we'll see what happens as i as i get deeper into it um but that's it i mean once i'm done with this um i've got a couple other things on my docket to play um and I'll, i'll probably end up picking up uh uh hitman uh so i'll have that to play as well so but I got to get through this one first. Before we move on to Ken, uh, one of you mentioned Lawnmower Man. Yes. Yeah. K- 
Okay. That's a bad movie. But yeah. I have a worse movie. And it also stars Jeff Fahey. Twice. Because he plays two characters. It is called Time Under Fire. It's from 1997. Brian Cranston says it's the worst movie he's ever been in. It's gloriously bad. Everybody should watch it. There's an upload on YouTube that may or may not be official at this point. I have no idea. There was an official upload at one point. It's so bad. The bad guy from Kindergarten Cop is in this. Oh, too. yeah. Crispin. Oh, yeah. Crispin. Uh, yeah. That was his name in the movie, right? Yeah. His real name is Richard Tyson. Sure. So I, I have seen this movie. You know why? Did I send it to you? Because you sent it to me. <laughs> it is so bad. It's so bad, but it's great. It's a good laugh. You know what's going in. Uh, it looks like it's all filmed in like one warehouse. That's the future. The future is just the inside of an empty warehouse. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. It's, it's bad. <laughs> I got no time for bad movies. Ah, it's a good laugh. You watch it. It's clearly trying to be an action movie. But it's a comedy. <laughs> Unintentionally so. I mean, Jeff Fahey gets around for a dude oh. nobody remembers. <clears throat> and him in, in him in the dual role of him and his future son is just so bad. <laughs> yeah. All right. Jordan Ken, you're up. All right. This was the week of playing games that... Um are getting next generation upgrades. So I'll start with uh, God of War or the PlayStation 5. I I don't know what Wizardry Sony is doing, uh, but they released a patch for God of War that makes it basically like running at 4K60. And that patch was 128 megabytes. Easy. That's what I said. 120 megabytes. That's insane to me. Like, I was expecting the patch to be like, I don't know, 5 to 10 gigs. It's clearly... I'm assuming it was built in then. It may have been. It was, but and all they had to do was turn it on. In high, it, You know, in comparison, the Division 2 got upgraded to, you know, 4K60 on the Series X this week. That patch was like, uh, like double digit gigs. Like well, is one it, of them is a third-party developer, and the other one was probably like, hey, why don't you future-proof this? Yeah, it was beautiful. Or Sony. Uh, also, God of War running at 4K, 60 frames a second. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I think I need to replay that game. Holy shit. Just just holy shit. Uh, and to be fair to The Division 2, that 60 FPS patch for that, oh my god, it's like a new game. It feels... So good. I figured that would make a, a big difference to that game, huge, like the gameplay. Like, huge difference, Drew. Like, that game legitimately feels like a new game. I probably put three hours into that game this weekend. Was that just PS5? No, no, no. That's on Series X. I may have to load that back up. Yeah. Because I never I, actually finished that game, and I really liked it. I just never finished it. I didn't either. And I wanted to play more of it. And as soon as I played this at 60 FPS, I was like, oh, wow. Okay, this is a much better game. I love 60 frames per second. I want to talk about Control. I don't want to talk about Control's business practices because they suck ass. But that new version of Control is really fucking good. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to play that too, probably before I buy Hitman since I'll have it for free with uh, PlayStation Plus. That that upgrade is so good, and it's not just the 60 frames per second. It's not just... Which, by the way, you don't get 60 frames per second if you want to play with ray tracing. I recommend you play without ray tracing. It looks really good with ray tracing, but man, once you play it at 60, I just don't know how you could play it at 30. Like, it feels unplay. It feels slow and choppy at 30 frames a second once you play it at 60. But... The other stuff that they've added to the game... So first off, and I know Anthony knows this all too well, all of the quality of life shit that was broken in that game initially from the map not loading to like the stutters when you go into a menu to all of this other stuff that happened in that game, it's all gone. It is all gone. Um, 
the game runs buttery smooth, and they've added a new... So, it doesn't let you transfer your save. So, I couldn't pull over my progress to just play the DLC. But, it does have a new accessibility mode, where you can tweak how much damage the enemies do to you, how fast your... um your ability meter fills back up and how fast your ammo fills back up. Uh, it has a lock on aiming and auto aim and you can set it so that Jesse will never die from the enemies attacking you. So like the accessibility stuff they added is really nice and it makes me going back through the main campaign a super breeze because I've already played it. So I just kind of want to get to the end game for the, the DLC. Did, did you ever do the end game bosses? I did not, which is another thing I will do with the ability of not dying. <laughs> yeah, because the 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 guy that you fight early on. Yeah, the, the guy speech, in the in the the room at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, you can go and fight him after. And I was trying to. I was like, I'm gonna hundred percent this game, and I just could not fight him because it's one of those bosses that summons normal enemies to come and fight you too. Yeah, and I. This was around the same time, like that year, because that was the same year as um, Death Stranding, right? It might have been, anyway, yeah. It, it, there, was a, there was a short period where I found a bunch of games where they'd have you having to shoot something up high, and then they would send swarms of enemies to attack you at your level. So your camera has to be up high. And you wouldn't be able to see who's coming to attack you. It felt so cheap. And that final extra boss was just so much of a pain in the ass. I went, fuck this. I'm done. So now you just have a checkbox in the options menu that you can turn on at any point. Do I? Or is that only with the new version? I think they're patching the old version to to add that accessibility that, option. That would be nice. Yeah. So that that has all been great. I've played up through... I just did the the... Oh, the puzzles right when you get to the para, the parapsych, what is it? With the lady with the gun where you can do the puzzles on the Paras- board. Parapsychology. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just did that. So that's where I'm back to in this version. And I think I'm going to keep playing it because, man, does that game feel really good at 60 frames a second. So, and let's, let's be fair, that's one of the best games of last generation. It's It's really good. Oh, uh, I think that was all the upgrades I played this week. Uh, so let's talk about the Switch. So I had been hearing about this little device that you could plug into the HDMI cable on your Switch to like kind of clean it up, basically like an upscaler. And I wanted to try it out, so I reached out to the company that makes it. It's called the M Classic. Uh, and they they shipped one over, and I plugged it in. I think it was Thursday afternoon. I plugged it in, and wow, like especially now that I have like a Series X and a PS5, and I'm seeing these games, you know, rendering at 4K and how clean and crisp like the image is. The Switch looks really blurry on my TV. Uh, as soon as I plug this thing in. The difference is incredible. And what I love about this, so the device looks like a USB memory stick. Um, you plug the HDMI cable into one end, and then you plug it into the HDMI port on your TV, or you can run it, you know, daisy-chained with a an HDMI extension. It does require power, so you have to power it with like a USB micro, uh, which is there is a USB spot on the switch, so I was able to use that. And it has a little switch on the side. Now, there are three modes. There's the, the regular pass-through, where you get the standard image. The middle, which is an upscaler for things like the Switch and the Xbox 360. And then there's a final switch to the far right that's for retro games designed to run in 4x3 mode. Um, what is nice about this Switch is I booted up Mario Odyssey, for example, and I just put the camera really close to Mario himself. And then I would turn off the upscaling to see it, you know, the way it normally is, and then flip it really quick, and the difference was just incredible. Like, the way that it upscales the pixels, it basically renders the image in a 4K 
like output. Now, granted, the switch is only pushing so much out of it, but what it does clean up is super impressive. And I ran a test on a ton of games. I played Donkey Kong. I played Mario Odyssey. I played um, Hyrule Warriors. I popped in Breath of the Wild. And then I went back and did some 2D stuff, um, like Blade Strangers and AVGN and a couple other things. And just like every game felt newer and cleaner. And it, it felt like I'd upgraded all of my games visually. Now the downside. The thing is $100. <laughs> So it is very expensive. It is, you know, one third the cost of a Switch itself. Um, but I tell you, if 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 you are tired of looking at the blurry Switch images and you play your Switch a lot, I really think it is a good investment to make it look really good. Especially if you've got a really nice new TV like an OLED or, you know, one of these newer model TVs. It really, really makes the games look a lot better. So, uh, indie games were light this week. Get 10 Quest. I don't even, it's like a grid based game where you click on some numbers to get 10. Uh, it's whatever. Uh, I did play Roombo First Blood, which is the Roomba game where you're going around killing the burglars and then cleaning them up before the people get home. That game is goofy as shit. Um, I played Concrete Genie because it was free on PlayStation Plus. I really wish that game didn't have motion control. Like, I know you can turn it off and use the right stick, but if you ever played a game that uses the right stick to compensate for motion controls, you know how bad that feels? I just, I don't know. I really like the aesthetic of the game. I like the concept of the game. I really like the way it looks. I love the kind of like the Leica Studios sort of look with like how their mouths look like cardboard, like South Park yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, like um, that well, stuff. No, it looks like um, Coraline, Coraline, or but their um, mouths oh look God. like it's like cardboard or something. I don't know. It reminds me of like the old claymation Christmas stuff, and like it. I don't know. There, there is a look to it that I like. Coraline, uh, Paranorman, Kubo and the Two Strings, Corpse Bride is a little different, but like you look into Leica movies, and that's very much the style they're going for. Yeah, I, I like the game. I just don't like the motion control painting. Yeah, that's. I just, and I did it with the right stick, and I'm like, wow, this is even worse than the motion control. I, I'll, I'll probably go back to it and play a little bit more of it, but. First impressions were like, wow, I really like the way this looks. I like the characters, but I really don't like painting. <laughs> so. <sighs> All right. I want to talk about one more game. I wrote my review for this Friday. Sent it over to Drew and Dave. I've been playing this game for like two weeks, three weeks, something like that. It's called Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood. Tell me how bad it is. <sighs> So, it's a cyanide jam. And I'm going to be real honest. I like sticks. I like sticks 1 and 2. They were janky, but I kind of liked them. They knew what they wanted to be, and they kind of achieved it. Werewolf has really fun combat when you're the, the werewolf. It's visceral. It's fast. Um, it feels good. Everything else in this game is awful. <laughs> so there are stealth segments where you can sneak through bases, switch between human form and, and wolf form, and take people... It's all fucking useless. Don't do it. Just kill everybody. Yeah, well, that's kind of like their... The last game I played for them, which was uh, Call of Cthulhu. Yeah, don't... The stealth is pointless. Yeah, the stealth was bad in that game, too. I mean, you can try it, but there are very few levels where you will actually make it through the entire thing without being seen. Eventually, you'll trigger somebody, and then you just kill them. And like, you wasted ten minutes of sneaking. J just, just fucking kill them. It's not hard. Just kill them. Um, number two. 
The story in this game is bad. The voice acting in this game is bad. Like, it is just, oh my god, the main character is the best one, and he's, he's awful. Like, the, the NPCs have, like, that dead-eye zombie look to them. Um, like, the graphics look like a, a, a B-tier Xbox 360 game. <laughs> oh, man. Like, they're bad. They are I'll, bad. I don't know when it happened, but the whoever owns the rights to the Worlds of Darkness stuff just started licensing that out to everybody. Yeah. This... Fuck it. We can just license this. Not only Vampire the Masquerade, but Werewolf the Apocalypse. Let's just fucking not wait for a good product to come along. Screw it. And so we have a bunch of where there's a bunch of, uh, and I'm not criticizing the quality because I actually haven't played any of them, but there's a bunch of Vampire the Masquerade and Werewolf the Apocalypse visual novels. Um, and by that, I don't mean like vi- like a lot of drawings or kind of static images and there's some text on screen. I don't know how interactive they are. Um, and then you have this. Um, Vampire the Masquerade 2 doesn't seem to be like it's going anywhere good um, just from all the troubles that they've been having behind the scenes yeah this game I don't is know what $50 happened. yep and the problem is is like people look at it and they're like oh it's in the world of darkness and like the box art looks all flashy and cool don't don't buy this game it's, it's really a bad video game like the whole it's only like six to eight hours, I think, is how long it took me to finish it. And it took me weeks to get through that six to eight hours. Because I just did not want to play this game. <laughs> Whew. It's a bad video game. Uh, and the other thing I'm playing I can't talk about yet, but um, I'll be talking about Little Nightmares 2 next week. I think I'm almost finished with it. So hopefully it's I'll a have... shame that uh, a game where you play as a werewolf isn't good. It sucks. There aren't enough of them. Well, here's the but... thing. When this game is on Game Pass or it's like $10, play it simply for the combat. The combat is fun. Like, you get these powers where you can, like, leap on dudes from across the entire screen. Um, you can grab them and like throw them at each other and like execute. Like it's, it feels really good. The combat does. The problem is, is that it just doesn't ever change. This is the first of three games they're releasing this year. Yeah. Uh, I really, Blood Bowl three, <sighs> Blood Bowl three is coming out this year and pro cycling manager 2021 is coming out this year. I'm sure they're not the same teams, but they haven't done a game since 2018. Who cyanide? Y- yeah. Yeah, Cyanide's last game was Sticks 2, right? No, Cyanide's last game, uh, they had Pro Cycling Manager 2018, Latour uh, de France uh, 2018, Space Hulk Tactics 2018, and Call of Cthulhu 2018. Okay, the last game I played from Cyanide was Sticks 2. Was Sticks Shards of Darkness, yeah, that was yep. 2017. I like the Sticks games. Yeah, I and I liked... I, I like... Um... Uh, of orcs and men too, but fuck everything else they do. Yeah, it feels like maybe uh, they Blood should Bowl just stick to mixed that. Bag. I'm not a huge f- fan of football, so I can't really speak to Blood Bowl. But uh... I didn't like Blood Bowl. Okay, well yeah. they did the Game of Thrones RPG. Oh God, don't play that. I was interested what? in the Space Hawk game because I I loved the original Space Hawk on PC in the mid '90s, but I never actually played it, so I don't know. I, if it's yeah, I don't. Or not. I don't There's know so many different good. ones too. There's the first person one that's made by the team that did I Divine Cybermancy. Uh, there's Tactics. They also did Space Hulk Deathwing. There was a Space Hulk game that I liked that was like um it, it looks like a Diablo tier. from a distance, but it's not. Oh. It's um oh my god. Is it, it um de- uh, um Deathwing? No, the, not, the one that was on mobile? No, it's not Made Death, by the guys that made Warhammer Quest? No, it's not Deathwing. If somebody said the name, I would know it. But it's got like this really weird subtitle. I think it was Warhammer, not Space Hulk. It was... God, I can't remember the name of it. It's on Xbox. Um, Ascension? 
Was it Ascension? It's like it's it's like Ascension. There's there's so much. Speaking of, I remember the game games. being like a top down perspective. You go through these old like you literally travel from ship to ship, and you get on the ship. You kill everything that's on it to retrieve stuff, and then like you can go back. Now to My the, turn. What's that? Is it is it like a turn based? No no no. It's real time. Okay. Um, okay. God, I'm gonna Chaos need to dig. Chaos Bane. That's the one. That's a old school Warhammer fantasy, but yeah, yeah, like that one I liked. Like it, it seemed like it was going to be like an action RPG, but there's actually a lot more to it. You t- you talking about the one that was like Diablo? It That's it plays game. like Diablo, but there's more to it than just loot. There's like no loot in the game or something like that. I don't remember. That's that. not that's not Chaos Bane then. Okay, so then there's a different one. Okay, it... there's too many fucking Warhammer games. You hack and slash talk action about, playing Talk game. about not being protective of licenses. Yeah, yeah. Choose one of Inquisitor. five. Inquisitor. Inquisitor. That's the one. Okay. Warhammer Inquisitor. 40k Inquisitor. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good lord. I this, I literally did a search for Warhammer yeah. Xbox One and got like 20 games, but there it is. Yeah, that's... Um, yeah. <laughs> God, <laughs> that's, I forgot that's... Necromunda was... Uh, I can't even remember the name of... Um... Of uh, the one that's in first person, that's kind of like a horror space horror game where you play as one of the space hulks. Um, I mean that the, the original space hawk, uh, yes, uh, space yes, hulk yes. was like that, yeah. Where um, it was the original space hawk was really actually innovative for its time because it was you controlled four, I think it was four, maybe it was five, um, uh, space marines at a time. And you you basically could see through their visor, and so you had to switch back and forth um, to cover hallways. And and if someone was getting attacked, you had to switch to them real fast. It had a it had a real that's um, the uh, really to it, right? Huh? That was on. Saturn I, I mean, it may well. it may have been on Saturn. I yeah, I played play it on, on it. PC. There, uh, it, it, it was probably. Um, no, Deathwing's definitely it's not the one I'm thinking of. That's this... the newest one that uh, is first person where you like go into oh, gotcha. the empty spaceships and it's just quiet and then you know stuff comes out and you're armed to the teeth with guns. And gotcha. there are there's too, too many, many Warhammer games. <laughs> there's too many Warhammer games when like I can't keep track of the ones that I enjoyed because I don't know what they were called. Holy shit. Anyway, that's I think that's it. For me this week, it was a good week of playing games. I think I think I'm gonna play some Division Two, and I think I might replay God of War after I finish replaying Control. Because God of War 4K60 is a beautiful thing, and I've only ever finished that game once. I'd like to play through it again. It's a very good video game. Speaking of video games, what's out this week? Um, there is only one. Next gen only game that I see coming out this week, and that is coming to Xbox, and it is Outbreak Lost Hope, which is actually just an old last gen game, just being enhanced for Xbox Series X. There's nothing for the PS5. Uh, how about the PS4? Okay, you guys are just chatting up a storm over here. Okay. <laughs> Purdue, <laughs> Purdue, Purdue, you're confusing me. We're sending stuff about Space Hulk. <laughs> okay, well, you need to stop because in a minute it's just going to be Purdue, 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 Purdue. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, so, out on PS4 this week, we got Doug Flutie's Maximum Football 2020. That's a lot really? of words. Yeah. Doug Flutie. Doug Flutie. You guys own a fo- football game. Gonna gonna have some uh, certainly timely some cereal uh, with it. Yeah, Doug Doug Flutie, most recently known for the low T testosterone replacement commercials. All right, uh, my universe. Talks about how much some dude's wife's gonna love it when he gets back on testosterone. <laughs> uh, my universe, pet clinic, cats and dogs. A ground. Death Crown, Little Nightmares 2, and Romance of the Three Kingdoms 14 Diplomacy and Strategy Expansion. Jesus Christ, no. Me me being me being the terrible person all I could think of is like, well, that in that universe 
there's, well, there's going to be a lot of animals dying. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> very bad bets. On Xbox, we're getting On the Road Truck Simulator, Endurance Space Action, and Rover Wars Battle for Mars. Uh, Nintendo Switch. Bubble Bubble Ocean. Urban Street Fighting. Contract Killers. Hero U, Rogue to Redemption. Hexagon Defense. Hashtag Sinuka Attack. Choices that matter and their heroes were lost. Okay. Uh, Healer's Quest. Negative, The Way of Shinobi. Summer Catchers. The Flower Collectors. Try Six Infinite. Undermine. Number one, Crosswords, Gal Gun Returns, Birthday Suit Collector's Edition. <laughs> oh, God. <Wow. laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I just having flashbacks to our fucking yep. stupid talk from weeks ago. Yep. Oh, God. Halloween Forever. Anti party <laughs> <sighs> Halloween Forever. And finally, the biggest and best release this year, this week. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. I'm sorry, we can't take this trade-in of the special edition of Galagon that came with the underwear because we don't know if they've been worn or not. Well, how about the birthday suit collector's edition? <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> I gotta know what's in this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know that you want to know what's in it, if I'm honest. Okay, I found it. <laughs> I found it. Wait, is this it? Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, save this image. Because now I'm going to put something in the chat. Word. Word. There you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm going to run through this. So you I get... That's, that looks horrible. You That's, get, I don't. I don't want that. You get safety goggles, which is like a tank top. I don't even. That's funny. Uh, two and one art book, three disc soundtrack, six pins and coin set, and six art cards. Not really living up to its uh, name of the birthday suit edition. I. <laughs> what the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> Lonely fucking nerds. <laughs> oh, man, I play for the I play for the the video <laughs> game play. Like it's so good. Well, that's <laughs> all, I'm about to choke to death from laughing at this so hard. So just just as you know, that game was cancelled for Xbox and PlayStation. It's only coming to Switch. Of course. Yeah. And it was cancelled for the reasons you expect, because um <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> You gotta be extra horny to play that game. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I can't, you know, really, I can't say anything. Like, I'm sure you saw, and we'll, you know, might as well just roll in the news. You see the tweet that came out from Capcom? Um, about oh, Lady yeah. Demetriscu <laughs> or whatever. Nine, six. They, they, they gave horny Twitter her actual height with heels and oh, Yeah, I did, I did see that, yeah. You know what? They, <sighs> They they leaned into something. Hey, good old. And, they're doing the right thing, but yeah, horny, that's, I'm like, sell sell those video games, boys. Horny Twitter needs to stop. It's it's. What's funny is a lot of people that are all into that would probably also chuckle at the gal gun stuff, and I'm like, yeah, dude, and it's it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Resident Evil. Yeah, uh, you know what? I was gonna say it should. It, it doesn't come with a pair of panties, but at this point, I don't know if a special edition has been announced. It's probably gonna have her shoes or her hat or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, no! An absolutely enormous pair of pants is what. It's <laughs> they'll, they'll, they, but it's got to be like old lady bloomers or something. Oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Um, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Uh, EA came out this week, gave us a trailer, some screenshots, and a release date. It's out in May. Good. 60 bucks. No, 
no multiplayer and it's missing one of the DLCs from Mass Effect One, but yes, they've at least yeah. they've at least explained why it's missing. Yes. Do you know which one it's missing? Um, I want to say it's. I just I saw it. Don't and... remember what it's called, but it's like you you get an apartment or something like that in on the moon. Or near oh the yeah. Moon. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I know which from, one. From about. my understanding, it's not like a big DLC sort of thing. Shadows right. of, or no, that's not it. Sorry. Damn yeah, it. I can't remember the name of it. I just I'm had it. Uh, Pinnacle Station. Spe- speaking, by the way, of lonely nerds, <laughs> there was a lot of uh, controversy around the Mass Effect Legendary Edition as well because oh, we're gonna have the button they, talk. Yeah, they made mention that they change so that basically in their work on Mass Effect Two, <laughs> they um, were forced to kind of ask themselves. Why? Why is this camera pointed straight at Miranda's butt? <laughs> like, there's really no reason for it. And so they changed some of the camera angles to reduce that focus. Which I don't know if any of you remember Mass Effect Two. It's blatant and obvious. Um, that game is very and there, horny. And there were a whole bunch of really angry nerds about that too. I think my What's favorite the point in playing it. Maybe, it's like, dude, just <laughs> maybe, maybe you should strike out. <laughs> So, yeah. so I I, uh, I normally don't give you know credence to these people, but I saw the best tweet about it, and somebody just came back and said, "Well, maybe we should just call it M effect now." <laughs> That's <laughs> take, pretty good. We're taking the ass out of Mass Effect. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh shit. So yeah, that's out in May, sixty bucks. I will I, probably play the uh, shit out of those games again. I will end up. That'll probably be the first time I play through two and three. Oh, those in games any are so good. Well, I have them all on PS3. Well, there's but, your first problem. Well, no, the first problem is one is a fucking tough game to get through. Well, they've changed that for this new. That's one. That's exactly why I'll be playing it because. God, it's not even the Mako stuff. It's literally the combat. Oh, the Mako nah, stuff. I don't know. Bad that too. Mako stuff is rough. Yeah. Bro. The Mako stuff is rough, but like, oh, I'll just I'll choose to be a sniper. No, I won't. <laughs> Let me just aim with this thing. Oh, it just circles around the guy's head. Ugh, awful. All right, uh, we talked about it last week, but uh, San Diego Studio has confirmed it will be the show twenty one. Coming to Xbox Series X and S, uh, as well as Xbox One, and will be cross-platform play with PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. This is awesome. This is what... Great stuff. Yeah, this is what we want. We want games on all platforms and be able to play with our friends cross-platform. Yep. So. And uh, I'm looking Probably forward to that one up. a whole bunch of uh, Xbox fans getting to experience the show. A b- yeah. whole bunch of Xbox fans finally getting a quality baseball game. I was trying to make the joke, but I can't remember what the uh, MLB's version of baseball was. Huh? What was that? What was what was their RBI what was baseball? The oh, RBI, yeah. RBI baseball. But what about the RBI baseball? Hey, thing? they're they're making another one this year. Oh yeah. no, that was the they're... point. You shouldn't be doing that anymore. There are there are people who enjoy the RBI oh. series, but I think a lot a lot of them enjoy it because they don't have another option. Yeah, exactly. And, and I noticed this announcement did not include Switch, so Switch is still only getting RBI. So. Are they still making yeah. Super Mega Baseball? Oh, uh, they just, I mean, the third one came out last year. Yeah. So That was kind of big, I mean, the, for a while there. That game yeah, is wonderful. Mega, it's, just, it's just not a... It's like, not a sim game. Super. Yeah, I like Super Mega Baseball, but it's no substitute for the show. No. No. It's a lot of fun to play, but you don't get the players, you don't get the realism, so nothing nothing ever compares to King Griffey Jr. Oh. Um, I've said it a bunch of times, but mine is Super Baseball Simulator one thousand. Let's talk about something you may have not heard mentioned in a long time. Stubbs the zombies coming back. I don't care. Really? I like that game. I thought it was dumb. I wasn't a fan of it either. I like Stubbs the Zombie. Uh, it's releasing on Xbox uh, in March, according to this listing. It's not been officially announced, but there are achievements for it. So it's totally fucking happening. Uh, EA also confirmed that Battlefield 6 will be revealed this spring. And EA has announced that they're working on a college football game. 
So college football is coming back, although they have clarified it will not be out this year. Then they also say that the players would not be there. Yeah, but that's kind of expected, right? Yeah, I would assume. I still think that's a load of crap. It is, and they should allow them to be in it, and they should allow EA to compensate them for it. But exactly. But they're like, oh no, but your your college degree, you get a free education. Yeah, but you don't get a free education. The university makes a lot of money off of them. You think? Yeah. Oh right. You ready for this one, Drew? Blizzard has confirmed in a financial statement that both Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2 will not launch in 2021. I expected that from Diablo. Yes. I did not expect that from Overwatch. Initially, Overwatch was supposed to be out in November of 2020. 2020, yeah. And that's that's what's... what's, Is it just... I feel like Blizzard is trying is going to be adding more than what they've shown us. Oh, they will. So here's here's the question, and obviously this is just going to be for me and you because the other two guys don't play the game. They had pretty much said that they were done updating the first game. Yeah, they said that Echo was going to be the last character. They can't do that now. You cannot leave a game alone for a year. No, particularly if the game that we're playing right now is still going to be the game we're playing when Overwatch Two releases. Yes. So, and I don't, I don't see, I don't see what they're doing here. I'm telling you, and I, and I'm pretty sure they're gonna, they're they're gonna do this and and piss off a lot of their fans. It's getting to the point now where I think Overwatch Two is going to be a different game. Mm. I feel like Overwatch Two is going to be the next game, and they're going to have to leave Overwatch behind. I just don't see how they can do that. I don't think. I don't see how they can do it either. But I feel like yeah. that's that's what they're doing. I want to remind you of a little time where Destiny was going to be something that just kept evolving. Yep. And then Destiny 2 came out. Yeah, but see, here's the difference. Destiny 1, how long was that before 2 came out? About four years. So we're already at five. Yeah. For Overwatch, mm-hmm. which means it's going to be six. That, which means it's probably going to be a new game. It was yeah. bad when Destiny did it. I can't imagine... I can't imagine Overwatch 2 being more of the same. I just can't. See, Overwatch 2 was originally updating. going to be the multiplayer, quote-unquote, the multiplayer was still going to be Overwatch. Yeah, the same And game. people who had Overwatch 1 were going to be playing with people who had Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2 was essentially going to be a single-player slash co-op campaign mode that was supposed to be like fully functional and worked with everything. Like you could easily own Overwatch and still enjoy Overwatch, or you could upgrade to Overwatch Two and get this single player campaign stuff. But eventually, you have to drop off the people playing on Overwatch. Like that was the whole you, the, the whole point of it was that Overwatch Two's multiplayer was still going to be the old school Overwatch. But what I'm saying is that that is not really great for business. <laughs> I see what Blizzard was trying to do, but I, I think they, think work. I think they, yeah, I think they realized this isn't going to work. And and it, it would have worked a year ago if it would have been a DLC add-on to Overwatch. So what oh, happens I, to the first game over the next year, Drew? The only thing I can think of, we may get a new map, like a full full fledged map. We just got a deathmatch map. That's that's not real. That's 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 chump change. So you think we're gonna go a full twelve plus months without a character? I just don't think what you else? can do that. I, I just don't I think mean, you can you can leave this game alone for you. Now, granted, people like you and me will still play it. Yeah, but there's a lot of fickle people that like only come back to this when there's new stuff or they're making changes or adding things. Yeah, and if you leave this game alone and basically just you know, balance patch it for the next year. You're going to lose a huge chunk of people playing it. You are, you are. And I, the only thing I can think of, they've only announced one character. It's the, the Canadian. I don't, they could release her, but that's all I can think of. They got to do something. They can't. And and what I'm expecting is they announce this now. And then at BlizzCon, they're going to be like, well, here's the roadmap for overwatch for the next 12 months. When is BlizzCon? It's in March. 
One second. Okay. So they're gonna so they're gonna show like I, I wouldn't be surprised if they shadow dropped something during BlizzCon like hey there's a new character coming or something. Um, but you cannot leave that game recycling the same events throughout the year. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, I love the events. I think the skins are wonderful. I do. But you they're need... starting to get skimpy on the skins, though. Yeah, I mean, the, the events best... are getting like two skins that are actually worth a damn. Well, let's talk about the skin that's worth forty dollars, right? Yeah, that skin is awesome, but I'm but it's not, not worth paying forty dollars. Forty dollars for it? No way. I mean, it's really fucking awesome. James Rayner as Reinhardt. Come on. My 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 thing is. Like uh, Overwatch aside, like Diablo, there's people out there who are playing Diablo Four right now, like, like alpha testers. I bet you there's an alpha for uh, Overwatch in spring. Uh, I'm sure. I, I'm sure they're going to release one for the public. But uh, like, it, all right. So it's not a public test, but it is. Pe- fans of Diablo are playing this game, and the thing is, they're updating the alpha version because you can go look at the patch notes and you can actually see like screenshots of what they've changed. I'm like, okay, well, you guys have got this game running. You're going to take another full year to get it out. Yeah. Now Diablo's always kind of been that way. Overwatch is a whole new thing. Yeah. There's only um, been one precedent set. And so far yeah. it's been a five year long running precedent. <laughs> yeah. To but be that, fair, people one... are still playing it. Yeah. But you really Don't cannot. You me? Every 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 season, a new new season of Diablo comes out. People jump back in, and I, I and I do the same in Overwatch. I do all of my placements. Um, I play every event, and then in between times, I play, you know, because I enjoy it. But they really cannot go twelve months without some major a, a character, a map. What's 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 the Canadian character's name? I don't remember her name. I can't remember her name either, but well, it's been I mean, so long since Jeff has talked about Overwatch that I yeah, and now we I, know I just, it's not coming next or this year. So the only thing I can think of is they release her and they release Ta- Toronto. That's the only thing I can think of. And you know, but they already they already came back and they already went announced and said that Toronto and her were going to be like the first releases for Overwatch Two. Yeah, but I think they meant that as if the game was launching in November through spring. Oh, yeah. Which would make sense. But now that they've pushed it back, they've got to give something. They have to. Again, we're getting Toronto and her. Now, what they could do is they could do the first half of the year, you know, a map and a character. And then what about this? The second half of the year, they just make the game free. What, Overwatch? Yeah. Just make the multiplayer (laughs) free and let people just play it. Not only to keep the player base up, but also to get people ready for the new one. Possibly. I mean, but I, I, I don't know. That I'm seems. Gonna, I mean, we've talked hedge about the bets on making it free to play. Well, I mean, at this point, you're not going to get any new people if you're not releasing content for six months. Yeah, I would. I would assume that once Overwatch Two released, probably within the 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 first two or three months of that game releasing, Overwatch One becomes free to play. And that entices people to download it and say, hey, I want to play Overwatch 2, and then they buy Overwatch 2. I don't know. We'll we'll see some more in March. All right, let's talk about the Super Bowl. First off, who you got? Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are going to win. <sighs> yeah, I, I don't, don't like either team. I don't want the Chiefs to win, but I don't necessarily want Tom Brady to win. I don't want Tom Brady to win. That's the only reason why I'm, I'm choosing the Chiefs. I'm, I, so, uh, I'm done with Tom Brady. Yeah, I feel like my gut tells me the Chiefs, I want the Bucks to win because I really hate the Chiefs. But So the reason I bring this up is Madden Super Bowl predictions over the years. So this year they're predicting the Chiefs to win. Uh, sure. 37 to 27. Oh, so they're giving a score and everything. Yeah, they do this every year. So let's go back and see how right they were. Super Bowl 46. They picked the Giants to win over New England. They did. 47. They picked the uh, the Ravens to beat the 49ers. They did. 48. They picked Denver to beat Seattle. They did not. <laughs> so that one was wrong. 
Super Bowl 49, they picked the New England to beat Seattle 28-24. New England beat Seattle 28-24. How crazy is that? They nailed it to the score. Uh, they picked Carolina over Denver in 50. They were wrong. They picked New England over Atlanta. They were right. They picked um, New England over Philadelphia. They were wrong. They picked L.A. over New England. They were wrong. And then last year they predicted right. So they're about 50-50. Sure. So we'll find out. We'll know before this show goes live who won the Super Bowl. So when you're listening to this, all of this sounds ridiculous because you already know the outcome. Now, Uh, there was a weird press release that went out this weekend that Crackle is going to debut a five-part Nintendo documentary series on March 1st. Okay. It is narrated by Sean Astin. Okay. And features people such as Reggie fils and Phil Spencer. Okay. So, I guess I'm downloading Crackle, because I think I want to watch this. <laughs> That's free, right? Yeah, Crackle's free. So this just like came out of nowhere. I didn't even know this was happening. I just saw a press release pop up. I'm like, wow, that's that's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, just in case you don't know, if you want a physical copy or a digital copy of Super Mario 3D All Stars, you better buy it. It's going away in March. Don't forget. Yep. It is apparently sold eight million copies. Jesus. It won't be rare. <laughs> It won't be. It'll just be whether or not people are selling it. Yeah. Mm. I got my copy. So yeah. on Friday, uh, they did a Final Fantasy XIV um, event where they showed off the new expansion, and they also announced it is coming to PlayStation Five. Uh, PS4 owners will get the upgrade for free, and also it has still not been announced for Xbox, so I don't have to go back and play it. I don't think it's ever going to come to Xbox. Yeah, they claim it will. But I love that it doesn't, because as soon as they do, I'll start playing it again. It Didn't they also say that this was be, would be the last expansion? I don't know. I didn't watch it. I haven't played no. in so long. Like, I'm literally still in the first expansion in, in my character. I'm in Heaven's Ward. So. Which is still, like, 250 hours of that game that I've played, but, you know. Uh, they also announced they're bringing like a, a a new island where you can just like go and raise animals and farm crops, basically like a Harvest Moon style island. So that game is huge. It's very good, and if you don't have any other games to play, that's the game you should play because you wouldn't need any other game. So good. Oh, uh, I think that's all I got. Prince of Persia has been delayed. That's right. Prince of Persia was delayed. For They were kind of like, yeah, we heard you. We're going to work on this a bit more. It's been delayed indefinitely. Yeah. They did not put a date on it. Ah, smart move. So. I, I personally would say don't just remake the first game. Oh, here's... The... This is a piece of news that floated through that, like, nobody talked about, but I figured it would be more of a conversation. Gearbox was sold. Yeah, the reason why it's not a, much of a conversation is because... Um, Borderlands is still 2K, published by 2K. 2K, and Randy Pitchford is still there. It's just weird so that Randy Pitchford it... just has a bunch of money now. Like, I don't... Yeah, it's it was a weird because normally a company with as much prominence as Gearbox getting sold would make news, but this was just like a fart in the wind. I I think it's per, personally I think it's because I don't remember who they were bought by. Wasn't it Tencent? I don't think so. I would have I would have been more. I thought it was a big company that bought. It them. might be, but I'm just uh... Embracer Group. Who is Embracer Group? I'm pretty sure they're... Um, Wait, that's THQ Nordic. Yeah. That's right, so THQ like, Nordic like, bought... Fuck. Yeah, so it's like... Okay. But they don't get Borderlands. That's the kicker right there. Yeah, I don't understand it, personally. That's weird. 
I, I don't know. No, here's another one. They're uh, trying to embrace groups, also apparently trying to get uh, Aspire Media. I mean, that sounds like a there. company that PHQ Nordic would buy. Yeah, sure. But like, they have a ton of money. Good lord. Well, I mean, they buy like 10 studios a week or some shit. I don't know. It's crazy. Anyway. Uh, the founder and CEO of Zenimax, Robert A. Altman, passed away this week. One of the founders, yeah. Yeah. I think that's um, news I got. Nemesis, the Nemesis system is patented, finally. So you'll never see it in another video game. I didn't see it in another video game anyway. Yeah, I know. Um, that might... You know, I said it to someone online. Um, you know, people are like, "Oh, we'll never see it in another video game." One, uh, that so there was a similar system in Watch Dogs Legion, and I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't good. And part of it is, I think the writing in Shadow of Mordor, like clearly they put a lot of effort into giving the orcs character, even though they were randomly generated, I believe. Um, so it made it interesting. The system itself isn't really all that special. Um, so even if it wasn't patented, it doesn't mean that it was going to be good in another video game just because they were, they had it. Cause the only other game that I've, again, has had it was Watch Dogs Legion. And it was not, of course, the exact same, but if I killed somebody or beat them up, that character would then get revenge on DeadSec in some way, usually by capturing uh, another member of DeadSec, and I'd have to go and save them. It wasn't fun. It was annoying. It was the characterization in the orcs. This one's afraid of fire. This one is afraid of the wasps and stuff. That made them interesting, and that was what was fascinating, was you could slowly see them work their way up the ranks and see them come back from the dead and all this stuff. It was the orcs that were fun, not the actual system itself. So I wasn't like heartbroken. It's shitty. It's shitty when anything is patented by a video game company. It's the reason why certain um, views in a, like when you switch view in a car, it's not a smooth transition because Sega patented that for Sega rally. I think Uh, mini games between, uh, mini games during loading screens was patented. Uh, Koei Tecmo has one on how many enemies can be on screen at the same time. I believe I. Virtua Fighter has patented. the command training patented. Yeah, like it's shitty. I get it, but I just don't think this is the one where that conversation. If it sparks a conversation, cool. But this is not the one I'd go ho hog on. Yeah, so. considering nobody stole it really. Outside of the one mentioned, yeah. anyway. So, and and like, let's be honest. The last game that did it, which was uh, officially, of course, um, was uh, uh, Shadow of War, and that game didn't go over great. So, okay, <laughs> you know, like, I what am I gonna say? Like, it, it, people got upset about that game. The conversation was not about the Nemesis system anymore. It was about shitty transactions that could be made. So you know yeah that's it like I, I i it's sad you'll never see it again but i can't say that was going to make a good game either um yeah that, that's it for me too all right i'll head over to the twitter gamer chat radio says oh he was replying to drew ever since ken was talking about quests a few weeks ago on the podcast i've been playing games on game pass that i would have never have played if it wasn't for the quests Bingo, bango, bongo. Siggy <laughs> okay. says, after listening to episode 637, I immediately searched for Super Console X on Amazon Canada. It's $115. Uh, <sighs> that was a fun conversation. All right. Uh, Dustin says, 13 Sentinels is nuts. Play it. Sorry, repeat that. You said it really fast. 13 Sentinels is nuts. Play it. Okay. That's the one with the, the naked kids in the mechs. 
I don't think. You sure they're naked? I know that's. Yeah, like... they get naked when they get in the max. That's a weird thing to take away from that. I've heard well, it is. it's a really interesting story, and the gameplay is kind of it's vanilla weird and different. It's they're, vanillaware. They're horny. And you go for naked kids and Max. <laughs> vanillaware is horny. If you don't know that, yeah. then you didn't play Dragon's Crown. Dragon's Crown. <laughs> yeah, that's the the only one where it's like clearly uh, on display. Uh, a lot. Whew. He also says, Which has fake boobs. <laughs> yeah. He also says, really excited for Endwalker, which is the new Final Fantasy fourteen. Can't wait to finish that story. Uh, he says, I played four hours of Immortals and fell off hard. I'll try to return to it later, but I have better games to play right now. Ow. I will not play 13 Sentinels if you did not like Immortals. <laughs> I'll probably cave and buy it at some point when I see it. 13 Sentinels is not my kind of game. I will never play that game. That's uh, uh, bo- uh, Three of the people that I pay attention to when it says play a game, which is Jay, Matt, and Anthony have all said play this game. So I'm, I'm, sure, it's, it. I'm sure this I is I know, a but you game. told me I needed to. Which game? 13 Sentinels. I don't know if I said that. I think I you said, brought it up at some point. I'm sure I did. I said, I want to play it. Yeah. It looks weird. I, and when Jay said, like, because I asked him about some of the gameplay, he kind of brushed my fears away about it. It's done far <laughs> more interesting. The problem is screenshots. Looking at that game, I don't, I don't feel like gameplay footage does anything for it, especially screenshots. Like, you look at it and you go, I don't know what I'm looking at. Yeah, I don't know what this game it is. far more interesting. It's like a visual novel play. mixed with, like, turn-based combat, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like tower defense-ish. Yeah, it was tower defense, and, like, to me, it looked like like some weird, like, um, uh, turn-based strategy or real-time strategy stuff, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, but, like, tower defense, I'm like, yeah, it sounds a little bit more like something I'd play. Yeah, it's not not for me, so I will never. Play Honestly, it. when Jay says this is a really good story, I'm kind of intrigued. I'm sure that it's a great game. It's just not my kind of game. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying like that's what sells me really hard. All on right, something. I'm trying to like, understand. I'm trying to understand his next tweet because he just said he had better games to play. He says it sucks. Returnal got delayed. Hopefully, Kena has a March release date so I have something new to play. But yeah. Immortals. You do have something new to play. You only got four hours into Immortals. Also, uh, I Returnal. I completely lost all interest in Returnal when I found out it was a rogue. Um, what is Returnal? That's the it's a space game. Who's the, who's the dev? Game. Who's the dev? It's uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Housemark. Housemark, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I don't know if it's Housemark or Housemark Key. I always call it Housemark. I don't know. I think I it's Housemark, called it Housemark Key because it, it only has. Has one E. It should be Bismarcky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Boo. You, like, you got what I need. But you say he's just a friend. You right now. I'm not a fan. It's I'm just, not a, I'm not a keep fan. Keep going, I guess. <laughs> oh, I'm baby, you. Oh, God. <laughs> you got what I need. Um, what was the other game you mentioned? Uh, Kina, which I'm super excited to play. I don't know that game. Kina, the Bridge of Spirits. If you've not seen it, look it up. It looks incredible. Um, How do you spell it? K-E-N-A. It's coming to PS4, oh, PS5. What the hell? Kina and the Bridge of Spirits looks incredible. I don't know how I missed this at all. Sony showed it off in the PS5, the first PS5 Not video. It's like probably just like, I don't care. Yep, it's PS4 and PS5. Apparently the PS5 version is it, like a lot more to it. So I'm excited to play the game. Like uh, that, so. an animated film. And I mean that in the best way is like the way the character is designed and yep. everything. I hope that game doesn't get delayed, but I would not be shocked if it did. All right, you ready for some hot takes? All right. I mean, this show is generally filled with them. Dustin says, Skyward Sword is better than Twilight Princess. Uh, We already had this this discussion on on Phoenix Down. It's okay to be wrong. He listed off his favorite Zelda games in order, like, from every one of them. 
And I did mine as well. Yeah, I I, I disagree. I I no. I I'm not even saying you can't like Skyward Sword, but that no. I mean it's just so bloated. Sorry, I can't I can't agree with it. No. Twilight Princess is much and better I, than Skyward Sword. And I don't and I listen, I don't necessarily care a lot for Twilight Princess either. It's a good game. It's like it none is. of them are bad games, but like I think Twilight Princess has the same problem. It's just less so. It's not as bloated. But I mean, like, a lot of, a big portion of that game, like, the trading quest sucks. I know that seems like a minor thing to complain about. Um, but I just didn't like, I didn't like the way the world was set up. The dungeons are the best part, but of course, you only really have to go into them once and then it's over. Yeah, so but the they're world so that you're good. In, Twilight Princess has amazing dungeons. But the world is so ugly to go through. It is. I it is. I find that game to be nice to look at. I mean, it was neat going, oh, but all it did was go, make me go, oh, Wind Waker was a really good game. Wind Waker's in the top five Zelda games. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. That's yeah. a great game. Wind Waker is so good. But it's, I mean, you can't get better than Link to the Past and Ocarina. It just. But yeah, Skyward Sword is way down on the bottom for me. Crap, I didn't I didn't keep my uh my list. Did you include the Game Boy and the DS stuff in yours? I, I did. Um I hate the DS games. I don't like spirit tracks at all. Yeah, I was I, I'm surprised to hear that somebody link else between here. you realize a link between worlds is a DS game, right? Yeah, link DS. between worlds uh, so the, is... a link between worlds did not require you to use the stylus to play the frigging game though. It did not, no, but it's still on a DS system. Yeah. That's true, and it is a fantastic game, and I think it's one of the best. They should yes. put that on the Switch. They should. They should. They should definitely put that yeah. game on the Switch. But no, no, the Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, I do not like those games. Yeah, those are not my favorite. Um, obviously, the three bottom ones are going to be you know, Wand of Gamelon. <laughs> we didn't count those. <laughs> They're canonical. True. They're canonical. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. They totally are. They should re-release those on the Switch. <laughs> no. You know, motherfucker, people out there buying Ground Zero Texas, people would buy Wand of Gamelon. Oh, you know they would, but... Yeah, I'm not saying... That doesn't mean it's good. It doesn't mean it's... Re- Dude, re- there's a $70 version of Ground Zero Texas on Limited Run Games. I can... Don't do okay. that. Don't, don't. That's preying upon bad things. People have weird fascinations with old crap. Yeah, and Wand of Gamelon, and what, what's the other? Yes. Uh, Wand of Gamelon, Faces of Evil, and Zelda's Adventure. That's right. People would buy the shit out of those. Have that guy that was re- fixing, fixing <laughs> the, uh, the t- fixing them to reissue them then, because they're terrible to play well yeah so is ground zero texas but people are buying it that game is bad like i i have a personal vendetta against ground zero texas i bought a sega i bought a sega cd when it came out and my mom took me to video game exchange like a week later to get a new game and they were demoing ground zero texas and i was like man this looks rad and it was like 50 bucks and i bought it and then i went home and i cried because I wasted 50 bucks on Ground Zero Texas. No. Oh, shit. Anyway, back to Zelda games. Yes. What is everyone's top three Zelda games? Link to the Past is number one with a bullet. Probably followed by Ocarina. Probably followed by Wind Waker. Okay. I really like Wind Waker. Say uh, Link to the Past, Ocarina, and Link Between Worlds. That's a good one. Anthony? Majora's Mask, Link's Awakening, and uh, Wind Waker. Anthony likes the weird Zelda games. (laughs) Well, I mean, so Majora's Mask is creepy, and I love it. I love the world of Termina, even though it's very ugly. Um, I like that you see the changes. I like the fact that the time system had these characters feel more real and not just kind of, you know, a character you talk to. She's not just a chicken lady. She has a life outside of that. That was always fascinating to me. Um, Wind Waker, of course, is amazing. So it's not really, I don't really have to defend that one. And Link's Awakening, like, 
I played the Game Boy Color version a lot because it was something I could take with me portably. And I love that game. I think it's partially because it's weird and partially because it plays a lot like A Link to the Past. All right, Drew. I just have more familiarity with that over A Link to the Past. Like, if you ask me for my next two, it's Ocarina of Time and Link to the Past. So I have my whole list if you want me to read them off. Well, what's your top three? That's what, that was your question. Oh, yeah. I mean, I got the whole thing. <laughs> but, uh, if they don't top... include the Tingle games, I, I don't count them. Oh, see, I don't, I don't count certain ones. Like, I don't count the, uh, the Four Swords and stuff like that. Crossbow training? Is that in your list? No. That's a good, that's a good game, though. Yeah, I'll just go through them again. Since you guys will never listen to Phoenix Down. <laughs> I listen to it. Shut up. Uh, I've been waiting for these to be done before I, I listened in. Because I was going to dry, be insane if you guys said something and then was wrong. And then I had to follow up the week after. <laughs> so 15, Skyward Sword. Yeah, that's uh, accurate place for it. <laughs> 14, Spirit Tracks. 13, Zelda 1. Oh, you hurt oh, me. You hurt a, me. Everybody that's, says that, dude. I have no nostalgia game. for that game. That game was the first game I bought on my NES, and I love it. I ha- I didn't play that game when it was relevant, and I went back to it when I was a teenager and I said, I don't it's, care to play this game. I, well, I what what bothers me What bothers me the most is that you're going to put Zelda 2 above Zelda 1, and I hate you uh, for it. I, I am. Is Zelda 2 right above Zelda 1? No, no. Whoa, shit! No. 12 is Town of Hourglass. 11, The Adventures of Link. No, nah, you're wrong. The Adventure of Link. The Adventure of Link. Whatever. Uh, but yeah, Adventure of Link. I, I like that game over Zelda 1, Boo. mainly because of just how different it is. Boo this man. Boo this man. I, I don't care. This is my list. I'm booing it. Number 10, The Minish Cap. Number nine, Breath of the Wild, and the only reason why it's low on this list is because I haven't actually played all the way through it. Oh, that's such a good game. It's a good game. I uh, wouldn't, it wouldn't be in my top five. Yeah. Now that I've you know been away from it for some time. Number eight, Oracle of Ages slash Seasons. Number seven, Majora's Mask. Number six, Twilight Princess. Five, A Link Between Worlds. Four, Link's Awakening. Three, Wind Waker. Two, Link to the Past. One, Ocarina. It's always it, it it's always funny that most people have Ocarina and Link to the Past as their one and two switched. It's, it's, it's whoever played which game you played first. Well, I mean, well, I, mean, I, I played, played them as the they past. came out. I, was say, I played a Link to the Past first, and I'd still put Ocarina above a Link to the Past, probably. No, uh, you're all wrong. Link to the Past is the best Zelda game. Mm, no, nope, Ocarina. Yeah, see, this fifty fifty percent of this so podcast well. agrees with it, so it's. No one. No one's going. Even even if I said my thing, even if there was five people and two people said Ocarina and two people said A Link to the Past, I'd still be screwed because I'd be going a Majora, nah, Wind Waker or something. Link to the Past. Uh, next hot take: Cooler Ranch is the king of Doritos. This is correct. No, no. What was it? What was it? Cool Ranch. Cool Ranch. Yeah, yeah it's definitely the best. No. no. Yes. Not and cheddar. Well, he's wrong too. It's nacho cheese, but you know whatever. Well, guess who outnumbers y'all now? Uh, don't matter. It's definitely Cool Ranch for sure. Cool I mean, this, is... this isn't even a question. Hold on, I'm going to use the PlayStation defense. Nacho cheese sells more. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're probably right. Use <laughs> no, but that's what and I'm going to call. sells more than uh, filet there's mignon. A, there's but... a lot of wrong people out there. I'm going to I'm going to use the PlayStation defense for now. Well, it's sold more. Makes it better. I don't know if PlayStation guys know, but they're being outsold by Nintendo. I, want, I don't know if they know that. Uh, I, think, I just I find think, it really funny that point. every time you can find a Series X, but you can never find the PlayStation Plus. Yeah, you can't please, find a Series X. Please find me a Series X, because nobody can find it either. Well, every time I see Wario come on, he always has <laughs> Series Xs that, that that are available, but you never see a PlayStation Five available. You know why? You know why I love Wario's tweets about systems. I go into the comments and mute a bunch of people. He, no, well, you can mute me all you want to, but the fact of the matter is, Sony is the best. If I had a pillow, I'd smother you with it. That's the so you, whatever. you can't because it's not made by Sony, so it's not the best. Uh, it's a body pillow. It's a birthday suit pillow. I, I hate Drew's. I hate. I hate Drew's nerd voice. It's just all right. Next, grating. next tweet. Whatever the PSVR two is going to be, even if it 
if it even happens. I really hope they patch RE8 to support it. Seven was on a different level playing it in fully VR. Hmm. I'm okay without it. Is, is, is uh, RE8 VR on PC? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't know. Huh. I don't feel care. like they're. We forgot yeah. news. This next okay. tweet brings up some news we forgot. With Google shutting down Stadia games, are we looking at another Google Glass? Um, you're, you're looking at another Google Play Music. Where they you're supported at... something. The Ouya and... again is what it is. No, 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 no. no. Ouya, Ouya was answering a question no one was asking. Um, this is not a answering the question Macho Man Randy Savage was asking. Oh yeah, but <laughs> somebody got oh, it. Yeah, <laughs> it, was just, it was just too quick. <laughs> oh, <shit>. um, the... <laughs> I miss Rudy Macho. Man. Our rip, rip Randy Poffo. Okay, God, makes me sad. Um, yeah, but I mean, like they they just sent me an email. They're like, hey, all the purchases you ever made on Google Music, which was their answer to iTunes, basically. They're like, grab them now because we're shutting this down in, at the end of the month or whatever. And it's like, you had that thing up for nowhere near as long as iTunes. And you didn't make anything for it. And now you're just done. I, yeah, I just use YouTube music is what they're saying. Well, it's a bit different. Like one of them is actually purchasing downloads and the other one was just streaming. And th- their inability to support something that works. Like, it wasn't like they weren't making money off it. They just decided that this isn't worth it anymore. Yeah, I feel bad for all the developers. It- it's um, I kind of don't, because a lot of them left places. B- like, at some point, like, if-, if video game players were like, this sounds like a bad idea when it came out, when you were approached, did you not think, we're going to make games that are streaming only like, well, you you have to understand that these developers are coming from companies that expect the, the overarching, you know, corporate bigwigs to give them, you know, I don't know the two to three years it takes to create a game. And they didn't even get that. Uh, But, but I mean, like if, if what I'm saying is people who, buy and play video games we're seeing from the get-go that google has a terrible track record i thought you said gecko i thought we were i thought we were talking gex i was like please bring back gex every time (laughs) um every time uh uh, dana gould posts something i usually post right underneath it like this is the face you make when you think about (laughs) the time you voice gex Gex was awesome. I love Gex. It's just funny because it's like in high. I really like Dana Gold. And they didn't use any of that, <laughs> clearly. Uh, um, but yeah, it, it's just like I don't I don't feel bad for Jade Raymond and a whole bunch of other people for leaving their jobs at Ubisoft. Like to go work for an untested product of a company that has no entry into video games jade raymond wasn't at ubisoft she was at ea oh sorry Uh, yeah and and there's i mean there's something something to be said for the ability the the career mobility that comes with working for a company as big as google so it's there's there's a lot more that goes into it than just you know what's this product going to be like there's there's a certain degree of financial flexibility and upward mobility that comes with working at a company like Google. Yep. That's yeah, that's one thing Google, some of them as well. But Google if that comes, not afraid to dump a whole lot of money into something and then a year later said, yeah, we're just, we're done with that. Yeah. And then you're screwed if you're on that project, right? Yeah. I, I think it, like, my favorite I tweet... Bad, but at the same time, I go, this is nothing new for that. It's kind of like Codemasters going to EA. Everybody going, this is a bad sign. It's like you had a, cho- but imagine you had a choice if you were working at Codemasters then to leave and go to EA. EA is opening up a new studio, and you're like, I have a choice to go there, and then you do, and that studio Ooh. gets shut down. It's like it's EA, you know. I hate to be that person, but yeah, why, why are you why are you blaming the frontline people for that instead of uh, the people at the 
corporate level that made the decision no, to shut the it down. Corporate people suck. The corporate people suck. I didn't say that they didn't. I am just saying, like, I don't have the same sympathy for you for leaving. When a studio gets shut down, it sucks. A bunch of people yeah. just lost their job. But at the same time, if you left your job, that it still exists, by the way, to go and work for somebody under these pretenses of this is going to be the better thing, and that company has a bad track record, I don't have the same sympathy for you. I have uh, sympathy as, anytime. Lady, somebody as someone whose job. company recently shut down a year and a half ago, I have sympathy for anybody that loses their job, regardless yeah. of the consequence or regardless of the circumstance, especially in the the time we're in right now. Yeah, it really sucks right now. But I I do have to say that I chuckled at my favorite. It might be my favorite tweet of the year. Um, y'all follow Jeff Grubb on Twitter? No. Awesome dude. You should follow him. Uh, but he tweeted a picture of Phil Harrison with the comment that just said, good job, 47. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you get it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he's bald. Well, he also has killed how many different things? That's yeah. oh, true. <laughs> I laughed so hard when I saw that tweet. Because it was very timely, too, you know. Hitman 3 just came out. It's true. So... I don't know. I found it hilarious. I'm sorry. All I know is, is the reason you know why Stadia is shut down, right? Of course, it's because well, Sony's better. <laughs> Stadia, it's not shut down. PlayStation it's Now the is the true cloud gaming service. It's yep. the studios Google was going to have make first party games that are shut down. That's just the start. Stadia will be oh, dead I in know. a year. I absolutely understand that, but it's just it's yeah. Which, by the way, is hilarious because there's there's actually somebody on my timeline who is a Stadia quote unquote fanboy, and his defense force over this announcement was just cracking me up. He was also posting patch notes for the Atari VCS, so there's that. I'm like, well, you like? Yeah, at least they put a console out. I can. That's more than uh, other. I used to know a guy that was just like that, and he actually he got his screen name from that. And at Ryan, you might remember him as Dead System Dave, because he loved to buy systems that were dead. <laughs> yeah, he used to write for the website. Yeah, way, way, way back in the day. Yeah. I remember him. Yeah, he, like his thing was like when a system died, he'd go buy it and like play the shit out of it. Like when the Jaguar got clearance out of KB Toys, he was like, "Oh yeah, let's do this." Oh, cracked me up. Whenever he bought a current console, it was always like, what are you doing? Don't do that. <laughs> All right, Real Shogun Beat says, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. That's the most mediocre looking remake I've ever seen, and I'm probably going to buy it. I mean, it's going to be discounted <laughs> since I have Game Pass, buy this, but the shame is real. <laughs> Look at this piece of shit. I want it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he did get into a conversation with somebody else on Twitter. They said it's not a remake, it's a remaster. Uh, Then he also makes the comment that the Mass Effect Legendary Cash Edition is $150 and it doesn't even come with the game. My shame has now turned into anger. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, there's a $150 edition of Mass Effect Legendary Edition does not have the game in it. What, does it come with a code? No, it doesn't come with the game, period. What the fuck? What, what the fuck is this? What is this? <laughs> don't you remember when they did that with uh, Battlefield? Dude, I don't pay attention to this bullshit. Yeah, like these collector's editions come with all this like swag and stuff, but there's not the game's not in it. <laughs> it's um, so stupid. Why? 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 Uh, there's got to be people who's actually God, buying it. Helmet. I'm sorry, maybe this one fits people. Um, who? Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 had this, too. Where they sold you the collector's edition separately. Yeah, here I oh, got... it's a wearable life-size helmet. Yeah, but this one... Okay, so there's a reason why this one's even funnier. I'm going to put it in the chat and see if you can tell me why this one's funnier. But this picture. This is the Mass Effect one? This is the Mass Morality Effect one. Center. Okay, it comes with the N7 helmet. All right, let me click on this. Key art steel case. Oh, it comes with the, the, the steel book, but you can't even put a damn disc in it. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, it's missing the canvas art print. Oh shit! It's got a it's got a disc case, 
And you don't even get a code. You don't even get a, oh. a disc with it. Yeah. Okay. Then he had a right. Man. The Australian one gets a canvas art print with theirs. Is it actually canvas, or is it going to be plastic again? <laughs> that was Bethesda. Come on, that was Bethesda. You've run out of canvas. You're getting a plastic bag. Uh, there you go. We got, we got you a trash bag. How are those people feeling from Fallout 76, still? Oh, uh, well, dude, apparently that's still going on. People are playing it now. I'm sure they are. It's in Game Pass, so why not? I just, man, I, you could, I couldn't be bothered to play that game. I tried several times and like it was so glitchy I couldn't play it. So yeah, I haven't went back to it since I reviewed it, and I was just like, "No, <laughs> no, no, take me home, country roads," because I am not playing this game. <laughs> oh wow, you are the king of bad ones today, aren't you? Sucker, that was in my tagline. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Uh, uh, I'm not even a dad, and I'm breaking out the dad jokes. Well, just wait till you are a dad, then your dad jokes are going to be like to nine thousand. No kidding, it's over nine thousand. Over nine thousand. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, uh, that is it for the tweets. If you want to tweet us at M4G Podcast, uh, you can also uh, follow all of us individually. Ryan is at Wombat RP. Drew is at Drew Leachman. I am at ZTGD, and you can follow the site at ZTGD Content. <laughs> Phoenix down, Ocarina time is over. Moving on to Yakuza Zero. That's right. That's right, Kazuma Chan. Yeah, Kiryu is in the house. See, that's the thing is, like, I'm so confused because they all call him Kiryu. Yeah. And I started with Yakuza 1 on the PlayStation 2. It was English voiced, and they all called him Kazuma. Yeah. And so I'm used to calling him Kazuma. And everybody else calls him Kiryu. So I got to get used to that. Because it's also confusing because not only do you have Kazuma Kiryu, his boss is named Kazuma. <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa, man, this is, there's too many Kazumas. Kazuma, Kazuma, Kuzuma. I mean, dude, once you get like to like fucking Yakuza 1, 2, and 3, and you're getting all those names in there, you might as well give it up. There's too, also, many, Mark, there's too many. Mark dudes. Campbell playing Majima. Majima? Pretty sick and Oro awesome. Majima? Yes, yes. Mark Hamill played him. But that's only in one game because the rest of them are in Japanese, I'm pretty sure. That's correct, yes. Yeah. But like, I started with that one and I was just like, oh man, this is going to be epic. I don't and think it the, was epic. I don't think Kiwami has the English voices. Did it does we, not. Did we, was it last week? Did we talk about Judgment getting the. Was PS5 that last week? Or- yeah, it's getting, it's coming to Xbox too. Yeah. yeah, that game is good. You should play that game too. Like, like you have time to play all of these fucking Rio Go Gotaku Studio games. It has um, full English voice acting as well. Yes, it did. I mean, and it's the good. only one that's PlayStation exclusive still is Fist of the North Star. Yeah, because six is coming to Xbox in March. Is it going to be on Game Pass? Yes, it is. Damn. Yeah. Every single Yakuza game will be on Game Pass. Except for Like a Dragon. Well, that's brand new. So. I'm assuming that goes to Game Pass probably in March when the PS5 version comes out finally. Oh, yeah. <sighs> These games that's are wild, all man. very good and very long, and I don't have time to play them all. Yeah, that's true. But I should play them all because what I've played, which is like 60 plus hours of Zero and like 50 plus hours of Like a Dragon, are fucking incredible. Dude, those games are fantastic. Yep. Every single one of them. Yep. I just need to find the time to sit down and play them. That was uh, like my little history with the the Yakuza, which I usually do on Phoenix Down. But like um, for a while there, for about two years, two or three years, I didn't play video games. And I went to uh, a GameStop randomly with a friend of mine. Uh, It was whenever I was going to college. I kind of just stopped playing games for a little while there. Also because I thought my PlayStation 2 was broken. Uh, it actually wasn't. It started working again. Uh, and I went to a GameStop and I saw Metal Gear Solid 3 sitting on the shelf. I'm like, whoa, when did they release a new Metal Gear? And he's like, dude, it's been out for like a year. I'm like, <laughs> give me that. So I, I picked that up and played it. And when I finished it, I went back to GameStop and I was like, I don't know what to play next. And I saw Yakuza 
It just had a picture of a dude with a dragon tattoo on his back. I was like, this sounds kind of cool. So I picked it up. And nobody was talking about this game. I was like, dude, this game is awesome. You remember when that game came and out? And nobody was, talked about it. Everybody was like, this is the Shinmu ripoff. They, well, originally it was marketed as Grand Theft Auto, but in Japan. Yeah. And I was like, that's a bad sell. That is horrible. That is not true at all. Yeah, that's how I originally heard about it. Then somebody said, oh, it's a beat em up. I'm like, okay. And then I played it. I'm like, this is a terrible beat em up. It's an RPG that <laughs> uses beat em up mechanics. Like, that makes far more sense. Oh, yeah. man. Wait till you play it, Like it a Dragon is. and it's like straight up Dragon Just Quest RPG, RPG yeah. man. Holy shit. Yeah. So, I mean, it's. Yeah, that was weird. Like, I, I was. Uh, not to sound like a hipster, but I was into Yakuza before anybody <laughs> even talked about it. Well, let's be fair. Nobody even started talking heavily about Yakuza until fucking Zero came out. Yeah, heavily started talking about it. People people jumped on the Yakuza bandwagon probably around three and four. Sure. I mean, they were selling enough to keep making them, but it wasn't yeah. a cultural phenomenon until Zero came out. Yeah. And now everybody talks about Yakuza, which is funny because that game is 20 fucking years old almost. Yeah, because the one is, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, crazy. If you haven't played it and you have Game Pass, go play some Yakuza because it's all good. Yeah. If anybody wants to join us on Phoenix Down and send in emails, play along with us. It is free on Game Pass. Yep, and that's on PC and Xbox. So yes. And Yakuza Zero might be my. I mean, I really like Zero. I haven't played. I haven't played anything else, so I can't really say it's like my favorite one. But I've heard a lot of people say that Zero, Six, and Like a Dragon are like the best ones. Four yeah. years from now, we will have it'll be uh, the twentieth anniversary of the first game in Japan. That's crazy. Yeah, great. Go play those games; they're really good. But I think that's it for this week. I'm gonna go. Sit in front of a TV and cry because it's the last game of football for like six months. But unless anybody has anything else, we can get out of here. No. Hey, Smash. Alrighty. And it goes something like this. Epic